Okay, welcome to the F5B video. Um, here, our big goal, our big goal is to define a function. All right, so what is a function? And I've kind of hinted at this, and, and we've talked about inputs and outputs. I'm going to get into some more of the nitty gritty here. Um, <clears throat> so this is going to be more of a vocab lesson. Uh, and I really want you paying close attention to the vocabulary here. <clears throat> so um, starting off, uh, our first definition is going to be the word set, all right? So a set, a set is a collection of numbers, all right? Uh, the best way to think about it, it is a collection of numbers. Um, and that's going to help us here in a little bit with our definition of a function because we're going to have two collection of numbers, right? We're going to have an input collection of numbers and an output collection of numbers. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. So I want to make sure we really understand what a set is. And it just again, it's just simply a collection of numbers. All right. So. A function right it has one input and it gives us one output I like to think about this like a pizza oven so since I am a professional fat kid and not an artist uh, Sometimes it's good to know. Sometimes it's good to, to kind of get a visual as to what in the world I'm talking about. All right, so if you've ever been to like a Papa John's or if you've ever been to like Quick Trip or whatever, you know a pizza oven, what happens, what happens with this pizza oven is that you take a, a dough and everything and you create your pizza, you put your, all your ingredients, your toppings and everything, and you put the pizza, right, you put the pizza on one side and it's this conveyor belt and it slowly, slowly passes through. And you have a little window here for whatever reason because you like to look at things cooking and it's like watching grass grow, it's awful. And, and, and if you really love pizza, it's miserable to watch it cook. Teachers, if you want to uh, check your mailbox, would you mind checking one more time? If you have a fourth hour, sorry, I just put your count sheets in your mailbox. If there's any second hour teachers willing to cover a plan, please give me a call at 7114. Thank you. All right, so think about functions in math are a lot like this pizza oven, right? They're a lot like this pizza oven where you take one pizza, an uncooked pizza, you have all your toppings on it, you put it on one side, and it goes through, and on the other side, you get one pizza out. In no way, shape, or form do you put one pizza on one side, and then you get two pizzas coming out. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. So again, one in, one out, okay? So sometimes it's good to have, have, have something in the back of your mind as to how does that work again? Oh, it's one thing going in and one thing coming out. Okay, so now I want to think about this in terms of a graph. No, we'll get to the graphing here in a second. I want to think about this like um, a little bit more in depth, a little bit more in depth. The question is going to arise at some point, at some point, you need to know what you can and cannot put in a pizza oven, right? So uh, a few years ago, Papa John's and Pizza Hut and everybody, they decided, hey, we could cook wings. So they started putting chicken in the pizza oven. And then they're like, hey, we could cook, um, you know, we could cook cookies and desserts and they put desserts in the pizza oven right so there's things that you can put inside of a pizza oven and you can get something out that is a product that you want now could you put uh you know uh in theory could you put like um could you put uh, a bunch of rocks in and then have a pizza come out no absolutely not right you want food to go in and food has to come out so it's very specific what goes in and what comes out so the same thing with a function so we describe, so the question is, how do we, uh, let's call it categorize. How do we categorize 
the numbers that go into or come out of a function. All right, that's the question. How do we categorize those numbers? Well, okay, so the numbers going in, we're gonna call that the domain. All right, and here, the definition of a domain, it is the set of numbers um, that go into a function. And then we have what comes back out. Well, we categorize those as the range, right? And the range is the set of numbers that come out of a function. All right, so domain, it's the set of numbers that go in. Range is the set of numbers that come out. And again, remember, a set is simply a collection of numbers. All right, now, I wanna make sure we're really clear on that. In general, the domain, it's all of the X values. I'll put a star there. And the range is all of the Y values. All right, so that's one way to kind of keep it short and sweet. Domain is your X, range is your Y. All right, so now let's take a look at um, I'll take a look at this concept here where we have something called the vertical line test. Now, on a graph, if any vertical line passes through more than once the graph is not a function. Hmm. All right, so again, vertical is the one that goes up and down, right? Vertical is the one that goes up and down. So I have a couple of examples here. Now let's take a look at these examples. Uh, again, teachers, if you have not done so already, please check your mailbox if you have a fourth hour. I'll be down in a minute, Brandy! In there. If you are on a second hour plan and you're willing to cover a class, please I, give me a call. I'm not. I have a second hour class. Thanks, Brandy. All right, so <clears throat> let's take a look. All right, on a graph, if any vertical line passes through more than once, the graph is not a function. So this is the vertical line test here. All right, so how can I tell just by looking at a graph, if I'm just looking at it, how can I tell if it's a function or not? All right, so here we go. Taking a look at this first one. I like to go, I'm gonna scan this with my pencil. I'm gonna scan it left to right. And notice how my pencil is straight up and down, right? So I'm straight up and down. Well, here we go. I'm going left to right and boom, immediately I can tell this vertical line, the, it passes through this graph of this oval. It's a terrible oval but it's still an oval. It passes through one, two times. Passes through two times. So if I were to just imagine this line right here, it passes through once here and here. Remember, X is the input and Y is the output. So if I have one X value of negative two, it looks like I'm getting two outputs. Well, this clearly is not a function. So the question being, is this a, is the graph a function? The quick answer here would be no, it does not pass the vertical line test. All right, let's take a look at this other snake over here. As I pass this, my pencil, I'm again, pass my pencil left to right. As I go left to right, look what happens. 
Hey, this pencil only touched the graph once at all times. At all times, it only graphs the touch. It, excuse me, it only touches the graph exactly one time. So this would be a resounding yes. This is a function. It is a function because every single input has exactly one output. It's only corresponding to one output. So the when x equals one, my output, I only have one of them. Right? When x equals two, I only have one output. When x equals three, I only have one output. Right? So it's really good to, to just be able to use the vertical line test to quickly, I mean, we could just, oh, no, that is not a function. Yes, that is a function. All right, we're gonna be tested on that. Uh, the homework is gonna be a series of true and false questions. And the true and false questions are going to um, be a, a, a revolving around what we've defined as the function and being able to use the vertical line test.